I'm going to very carefully cut into this, very carefully. I'm going to use a, a wire sensor to try to see where the voltage lines are running. They're probably all over. Everyone should turn off the main breaker to the house. Now keep in mind, when you do turn off the main breaker to the house, the two ports underneath running to the meter here will actually be coming from the transformer in the street. So these will still be live. So these are square D, so you want to match the same brand with the same brand panel you have. And oftentimes you can look at the inner side of it or even on the front and it will tell you what kind of panel it is. You can look it up and see which ones are compatible. Now here on the right, you see the grounding bar. There are stripped naked wires and there are green wires. On the left, you see all white. Those are the neutral wires. So this one, you do have to keep them separated. And if you can, try to put your wires into open ones. Don't, don't double them up. You can probe with something plastic or whatnot. Right there you can see the knockouts. See, in a typical setup in the garage, you can just punch out right there and run your outlet right down below and save a lot of money on wiring and hassle. Turn off the electricity. Make sure that the panel pop-out is clear on the inside, which I did. I think. Okay. So I just tapped it on the edge where I figured the spot weld wasn't. There's the hole. And here's the one inch adapter to three quarter pipe. It's gonna sit something just like that. What I'm doing here is I put the bend inside of the adapter all the way. And I'm just going to measure that. You can even use a level to keep it straight and go to this side of the wall and start drilling there. Here I have it in there and I have it angled the best I can do. Now you can see that it's pretty close to perfect. It's going to adjust a bit on the inside, but this is really close to the wall. First, plan out which sides are going to be male and female, or if you have all male, you're going to use all couplers, which I'll show. So next, I'm going to need to cut a piece of pipe. I bought 10 foot pipes. Roughly put this here with a little bit of space from the top so I can make sure that I have enough room for these flared out edges here. You want to account for this distance when you're hanging the wall hanger and when you're running the pipe. I put the box here and I let this dangle down and I measured where the hanger is going to sit, somewhere around here. The box here, this isn't gonna twist well, but if you do this, it works perfectly. I put it here where I thought I used the level to line it up. I marked, I pre-drilled. I finished mounting this plate. You can use drywall anchors. This one's gonna be lighter than this one. They're both, you know, heavy. Here's the unit test fitted sitting there ready to go and the pipe is all aligned and cut and ready to go. It's pre-cut and measured. Here are my four wires, 50 foot, THHN which is stranded white, red, green, and black. Here I taped the end and I have unraveled these and walked them out all the way through the entire house. It helps to have someone on the other end holding tension on them to try to keep them separate, but this is the best method. So unroll all of them and then work from there. And then what you do is just take a piece, thread it through and just slowly make your way all the way to the end. But I'm gonna put about three to four excess feet in the box. So you gotta account for that too. The breaker box as well have the excess and then the, the rest that I'll be cutting off will have the end outside of the two gang outlet box. A couple of tips here. You wanna separate every piece, especially turns and do them themselves. I ran one of the straight pipes all the way to the end and that kind of helped straighten out the cords and do one piece at a time and it helps to push the wiring through instead of pulling the pipe up on the wiring. It will be much easier for you. This is medium grade PVC cement. So here we are. I'm on the last leg of gluing it. I've been gluing it piece by piece and I have this hanging here. Make sure that you Note the XYZ angles of your corners before you glue them and have something holding them. I'm using the hangers with half a screw to hold them. I ran the wiring through here and through the inside port. And you can see here I have well over the excess length. So if you don't have to use one of these, do not use them. They're so terrible. <laughs> Reiko 696. I will put a link in the description. This is a Reiko something else. This is the one if you go on Amazon, this would be recommended by everybody. This will be in the stores, recommendations, everything for the plug. Ideally, you want one that's got the depth. The wiring is going to come down behind this. 
and then I have lots of space to loop it around in there and have some excess. For my particular setup, the line is going to curve over the top like this. So this one's going to have to be punched out in the back right, right there. Make sure you don't forget to put your ring on before you put the outlet on. I have this 20 pack of 3 quarter inch conduit clamps. And I also bought some polymer coated number 8 by 1 and 1 quarter inch. This is ran. I'm going to put the mounting brackets. So that's lined up for the most part. I'm going to mount it like this. It is irrelevant how you mount it. The opening here will be your green wire. If you look on the back, it actually says green. That's your ground. White will be your neutral right here. And the XX and the YY can either be red or black. It doesn't matter which is which on what side. I did buy these for $20 because they say they strip six gauge wire. We'll see if that's true or not. To deal with the green, I'm going to assume it comes to maybe there, so I'm going to cut it a little lower. And I'm stripping about half an inch or 1.5 centimeters. These require a 3 16 Allen wrench. Not a 4.5 millimeter, 3 16 Again, I'm just gonna loosen it until the copper drops down. <laughs> These are so not fun to work with. Next we have white. And lastly, the red. The other box had holes in the back to do this from the back. Typically you would screw these in first, but because I've been messing with this all day trying to get the wiring right, I didn't do it. So now I'm going to put these screws in the back of the box, into the drywall. Just to show you right here, these screws right here and here are for the box. These four were the holes for the Allen wrench. Okay, just double check the ports. Red and black tucked in as best as possible. You're going to buy something that looks like this and you're gonna remove the nut. I cut a piece big enough so these two sort of mash like this. You insert the wires like this. Make sure that the bar is facing downwards on your nut. Thread it on there. Notice how the ground wire is on the bottom here. I also put this on the bottom right of the box so they're very near each other. And then I put about 10 inches of wire here and I'm gonna tuck it in as well. Now, if the power wire happens to come out while it's live and hits the box, the box throw the breaker instead of electrifying the box if someone touches it. So this is a good thing to do and I recommend doing this right off the bat. A lot of you, if not all of you, will order this plug online. Yours should come with two bags of these screws. These don't need to be overly tightened. Power off. You can use a multimeter to verify, which is Always a pretty decent idea. These two on the bottom will still have charge. But so here's the breaker I'm working with. Screw for the first one. Remove the line. These have pigtails because they are AFCI breakers. And it's the best to replace AFCI breakers with arc fault, same type breakers. Unfortunately, they do not make tandem arc fault breakers for square D that I can find. On the arc fault breakers, You'll have the neutral line going into the back as a double line and then coming out here, this pigtail will go to the, the neutral bar. So you'll just basically move this neutral line to the neutral bar like it would be on all the other circuits. Here is the replacement tandem 1550. So the two outer posts will be to the original 15s. These and the two inner posts will go to the red and black wire on the EV plug. The white wire will go to the neutral bar on the left and the green wire will go to the ground bar on the right on their own ports. It's that simple and you just plug it in. I'm going to attempt to do one loop up for excess but I don't know if it's actually going to work out or not. So I'm going to just attempt that at first and cut it like so. I'm going to start with the green, the ground, because it's on the right and closest to where I did it. So let's see if these actually two down to go. So I looped the ground a little bit and I had to remove one of the breakers here just to access a clear path for the neutral but the neutrals in the neutral bar the grounds in the ground bar. So it's in the slot there. It's 
fully seated. Inside here, they have these little things and they can slide upwards. You don't want to put it under that. You want to make sure it goes inside in between that. These are the two 15 amp ones. Same scenario on these. Good. And then I will do the other one. All right. This breaker is good to go. Here is the final product. Put the plug in, snap the breaker on. Make sure this is getting power, and there you go. Yay! These plugs, by the way, are not meant to be used in and out, so I would not, I would highly stress not to plug stuff in and out all the time. The cover looks like this. Comes with four little screws. Most satisfying part. Wait for it. Final product. Very excited to be done with this. Yay, I'm done. Good job to me. <laughs> it's all this plugged in. I'm just gonna do a couple minor little excess things. Even if this helped out one person somewhere, sometime, I'm cool with that. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this helped you out. Subscribe for more. I very much appreciate your support, truly. And I'll see you in the next video. Take care.